Well, the biggest myth, in my view, in American political analysis is the so-called October surprise. I've always made my predictions before then and never changed them, and I've been right. For example, we got the biggest October surprise ever in 2016 when we had a major party candidate, Donald Trump, admitting on tape that he sexually assaulted women. The pundits were counting him out. People were telling me, you've got to change your prediction of Donald Trump's win because of this October surprise. I said, no, the keys tap into the fundamentals of how elections really work. If I We're back with The Big Deal. I'm Errol Lewis. Since 1984, American historian and professor Alan Lickman has correctly predicted nine of the last 10 presidential races. Last month, he officially called the 2024 race, predicting a victory by Vice President Kamala Harris. Professor Lickman does not use polling data. He certainly does not make blind guesses either. Instead, he has developed a set of 13 metrics, or as he calls them, keys, to make his predictions. Here's a look at what they look like. The factors that Lickman considers include whether the incumbent administration is untainted by a major scandal, how the long-term and short-term economy are performing, and whether the incumbent party lost seats in the most recent midterm elections or had to fight for a major battle within the party. If eight or more keys are true for the incumbent party, their candidate will win the election, in this case, Vice President Kamala Harris. But if fewer than eight are true, the challenger will win. Right now, Donald Trump has four keys in his favor, which is one short of what is needed for an upset. Alan Lickman joins us now to talk more about his model and his prediction. Professor, welcome to the program. Always good to see you. Same here. Great to be with you again. Now, you developed these keys back in 1984 in conjunction with a seismologist, the idea being that you wanted to be able to detect when a political earthquake was happening, like the 1980 Reagan Revolution. In this case, you're making an argument that Kamala Harris is winning in part because there is no earthquake coming. Why is that? Exactly. By the way, I developed it in 1981, and my first prediction was of Ronald Reagan's re-election in April 1982, nearly three years ahead of time, when 60% of Americans said he was too old to run again, and his approval ratings were historically low. And since then, the keys have been right. I would argue I was even right in that crazy election of 2000, as I proved in my report to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. Gore should have won going away, except for the tossing out disproportionately of tens of thousands of black votes. But we can relitigate 2000 forever. Here's where the keys stand now. And the way I like to put it, it takes six negative keys to count out the White House party. Five or fewer, they're a predicted winner. So what are the keys that count against the Democrats and Harris? Uh, mandate key, as you mentioned, Democrats lost U.S. House seats in 2022. That's one. Incumbency, obviously, the incumbent president is not running. Incumbent charisma, whatever you may think of Harris, she's only been a candidate for a little while. She's obviously not yet reached the stature of a Franklin Roosevelt. That's three. Another negative key is foreign slash military failure. The Middle East is a disaster. It's a humanitarian catastrophe with no end in sight. We may not be fighting those wars, but we're deeply invested in what happens there. So that's four negative keys. Remember, it would take six for Donald Trump to return to the White House and Harris to lose. That's why the keys predict we're going to have a path-breaking president, the first woman president, and the first president of mixed African and Asian descent, kind of foreshadowing era where America's going. We're rapidly becoming a majority-minority nation. Old white guys like me are on the decline. Well, you, you, you're making a claim here, which I find interesting, and I think some of my viewers would be surprised by, you're saying that the incumbent party, and we're not going to go into all of the details, but that the economy has been good enough in the short and long term, no major foreign policy disasters, as you've pointed out, no uh, social unrest on the level of national riots and so forth. But what you're, what you're, it sounds like what you're saying is that the incumbent party would win regardless of who the candidate was, meaning if Joe Biden had stayed in the race, you think he would have won. Well, I don't answer hypotheticals because who knows what might have happened if Biden stayed in. I think Harris has helped the Democrats with two keys. 
the uh, third party key because they don't have to choose the voters between two old white guys anymore. We saw uh, the third party of RFK Jr. fizzle when Harris came on the scene and social unrest because the protest had been directed against Biden. He's now in the background and Harris is in the foreground. So we don't know what would have happened if Biden had stayed in. You can't pull something out of history and figure out what the result would be. But as you can see, the keys fully take into account the, the unprecedented transition within the Democratic Party. It cost them one key, that is the incumbency key. They didn't lose the contest key because somehow the Democrats grew a spine and a brain and united behind Harris, and her candidacy may have helped the Democrats with two other keys. So now some analysts are going to be talking in these final weeks about the so-called October surprise, a piece of late-breaking, last-minute news that could sway the outcome of a presidential election. We've been hearing about it for, you know, at least 40 years now. Uh, but you say that that's all wrong, right? And that presidential elections are essentially an up or down vote on the party currently holding the White House. Exactly. You know, the biggest myth, in my view, in American political analysis is the so-called October surprise. I've always made my predictions before then and never changed them. And I've been right. For example, we got the biggest October surprise ever in 2016 when we had a major party candidate, Donald Trump, admitting on tape that he sexually assaulted women. The pundits were counting him out. People were telling me, you've got to change your prediction of Donald Trump's win because of this October surprise. I said, no, the keys tap into the fundamentals of how elections really work. If I had listened to the critics, I would have been wrong. And by the way, Errol, predicting Donald Trump's election did not make me very popular in 90 percent plus democratic washington dc where i teach at american university it was a prediction very much against interest well you're certainly right you're not using uh, some of the other metrics that some of your uh, fellow academics use like what a cab driver told them or what people are talking about on the sidelines at uh, you know middle school soccer practice <laughs> you know i get 10 e emails a day from people saying we know better how to call your keys. And my answer is, <clears throat> you want to develop your own system? Go right ahead. But if you're going to use my system, which goes all the way back retrospectively to 1860 in development, so it covers 160 years of our politics, if you want to use my system, you got to stick to how I define the keys. Well, uh, I'm impressed by your system. Thank you for coming on to explain it. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Let Spectrum News be your resource for balanced, in-depth political coverage. And click the subscribe button right here. You can also download our app or watch us on TV to learn more about the candidates, where they stand on the issues, and more. We'll see you then.